Hey, my name is Wouter. I'm the founder and CEO of Decision Vault. In this video, I'll show how to start customizing your questionnaire in Decision Vault. So here we're looking at a fresh trial I've just started and uh, two things from this dashboard um, you could already do. The first is that it's showing that I have a planning questionnaire here. And the reason for that is that your trial, your account will come preloaded with a basic estate planning questionnaire that works out of the box. Um, I could literally copy this link uh, right now and I could I could send that to a client and they'll be able to log in or create their account and start on the questionnaire. And in that questionnaire, it'll ask for the people in their life, the different assets that they might own, some boilerplate welcome language, um, and some other sample questions. And those are the ones you probably want to customize or add to. But the important thing is that it works out of the box. Like this will say the name of your law firm. It doesn't have the logo yet, but you can customize those things, but it will work. Um, that's the first thing. The other thing that's happening here is it has a demo matter that automatically gets loaded into Decision Vault, into your account. Um, and this one has a whole list of fake people, um, a whole list of different assets that these fake people might own. Uh, and you can, from here, check out the questionnaire by uh, opening, the, opening the questionnaire for that matter. Um, and you can explore to see what that looks like, like the asset intake, for instance. Now, let's look, talk about customization. Under settings, customization, you'll find this planning questionnaire. And then here, um, you can, this is a list of the different sections of your questionnaire that you can start to customize. Uh, so I can open the welcome section. I can edit these, uh, edit these welcome paragraphs and I can start to add my own different questions uh, to go to learn more about the different options that you have there's a help article listed below this video uh, in our support knowledge base on the different types of questions you can add so for instance if I wanted to add um, a question on how did you hear about us I can add a short text field how did you hear about us and then the numbers here are the ordering of the questions on the right hand side so I want to have it show up below there so maybe 10 I don't know it gives me some space to um, to move things around here so now we have this question um, all right as you scroll down in the about you section you'll start to see um, two things. The first is there's this giant gray block uh, uh, behind the questions. And what that signals is that you cannot change how Decision Vault will ask for contacts. Um, that has to do with we categorize and we capture that information in a specific way. And that's what makes it possible to then sync that information over to other tools. Um, there are some things you can change in terms of settings. So uh, by default, the, the tool will not ask for social security number, but there's a toggle to turn it on. Um, and uh, let me just show you for a second. So here on our setup, we have a couple different things um, that we can change when it comes to the setup of the questionnaire. So I can ask for social security number across the board. I can uh, pick how to ask for gender, um, how to ask for middle name or middle initial. That will not restrict it in any way. It just changes the, um, the label across the board. So those are some uh, setup options you can do under setup. And under questions here then, um, you'll see those reflected in this preview. Um, I didn't save, so that's why social security number is not showing up yet. The other thing is that we can see these sort of yellow stickies. Um, so that means that I can um, change the labels. So of course, it's what is your marital status is the question for a planning questionnaire. But if you create a probate questionnaire, the, it, the default will change to what was the decedent's marital status at the time of death. Um, but you can customize those things from here. So the fixed questions are fixed. <laughs> um, 
and you can customize them some with these labels and the configuration. If you wanted to ask other questions to the main client, you could add those below here as a custom question or text that, and then they will get asked to that client. In this case, employer and position are already questions that are here. So in this about you flow, we have a some conditional logic that shows up by default, which is that when people say they're single, the tool will about ask about them, who are you, what are your contact details, and then they're done. If um, they pick that they are married, it'll ask for who are you, what are your contact details, who is your partner slash spouse, spouse in this case, we're married, who's your spouse and what are their contact details, and then it'll show a screen on marital uh, details. So it'll ask for the date of marriage. Um, if they say they're divorced, it'll ask for optionally, what are the, what's the info on uh, your divorced partner, etc. You can customize those things here. So this partner slash spouse block will show up if they are married or have a life partner, etc. So it, you don't have to build any of this custom logic or this conditional logic. It's just there. Um, and including the on their marital details, it'll have that date of marriage question that can then be synced to other tools. So one thing that we're seeing here already on the screen is that um, on this question, whether you or your spouse sign a pre or post marriage agreement, when they say yes, the tool will ask for a copy of the pre or post marriage agreement. Um, and this is how you can ask for files in Decision Vault. So when I open a questionnaire for a second um, and then go to those, that planning question, uh, right now the documents, the requested documents are empty. No documents are requested from uh, the client at this time. But if the, on their planning questions they say yes that they, oh, <laughs> not there. If in the marital flow, they say yes to having a pre or post marriage agreement. Then once they get to documents, now that question is there. So that's the first uh, way to ask for files. It doesn't ask it right there. The client can say yes, they can complete the section, but once they get to documents, now they're asked for the file. The other way to do this um, is to have some standing documents requests. So for instance, if, if you always ask for a driver's license for a planning matter, or you always ask for a copy of the debt certificate for a probate matter, then under the customization section, under setup here, you have standard request for documents. So I can just ask for a copy of the driver's license. And now every time we create a matter, that's one of the requests that gets created by default. One more thing about um, one more thing about these fixed questions, which is under children, there's something similar going on. So there's a um, uh, a fixed question for when adding a new child. So I had the questionnaire open here. I can say I'm adding a child. So this screen cannot be customized. There's a lot going on here. Um, with extra questions, or are they adopted, predeceased? What's their date of birth? Who is the parent? Well, how do you describe the relationship? Um, they can quick select addresses filled in uh, for the parents, so it makes it easier to uh, uh, to not have to type that address again. But then you can cu cannot customize like the ex you cannot add extra questions there on a per child basis. But what you can do is um, add questions below that are asked in aggregate. So for instance. We can put a long text field in saying, do any of your children special needs? If so, please describe, right? So this question can be asked in aggregate and then the client can tell you what's going on. It's not possible this time to put like repeatable questions in for each child, but this way we can cater to uh, getting that information. Now, finally, something else that might be a little different from how uh, you would have it on a, a fillable PDF is how Decision Vault will ask for people who might uh, serve in certain roles. Um, so in the first versions of Decision Vault, we would have this in a very rigid way of saying, hey, the client who is going to be your power of attorney for the husband, for the wife in position one, two, and three. Um, and what that did was it was too specific 
uh, but then most of the client time the clients didn't really know what they were doing but it felt like they already made all these choices so then in the meeting with the client the attorney had to like get all those decisions out of their head um, and the second thing that happened was that it made it feel like the client was doing all the work and then it gave off the impression that like, hey, after this, you just push a button and now some documents get recreated, right? It's like LegalZoom. It's like, no, it's not like LegalZoom, um, but it gave out that impression, which, not, which was not helpful. Um, so in the default that gets loaded to your account, this is how we um, handle this. So here we have these elements. They're called a group of people box. This is a very original name. Um, and here the client can user can pick from the people that um, have been entered so far on the questionnaire to put just put a group of people down and they, they're not in order the names show up next to each other um, they're not split out um, but just to answer a question of who are the people who would help you make financial decisions right mm -hmm. so these are some of the people and then you as the attorney in the meeting um, can build up the actual list and we have some more tools to support you with that with the design sheets etc um, which is outside of the scope of this video but you can look for the design sheet video um, but here the client can give you some indication and it starts to get them thinking on who would help right help make financial decisions help make medical decisions um, who are the short-term guardians but we don't say that it's just um, who live who, who are some people who live nearby who would help with your kids and um, these questions then will give you a, a list of names and then you can talk to the client about what the actual numbered list is will be um, you can customize all this under decision makers um, for instance if i wanted to reword this sum you could do that here our advice is to just keep it to one box for financial one box for medical sometimes uh, users or our, our firm staff wants to split it up and have a list for the husband and a list for the wife. But this way, if we have just one box, mostly those lists for the husband and the wife are very comparable. So like we're just getting some names down and then later on we can figure out who's going to actually be in these roles. If you wanted to split it out, you can duplicate the question and then uh, edit the label to say who are the people who would help you and who are the people who would help your spouse slash partner. Because at this time, there's no way to uh, have conditional logic to make that show up based on marital status. So those are the main things for when it comes to customizing your questionnaire and the different questions on it. Um, if you wanted to customize your assets and liabilities or income and expense section to the questionnaire, you can find that under financial, where you can work through the assets and liabilities categories as well as the income and expense categories. You can turn these two sections on or off um, whether it makes sense right on a planning questionnaire you're probably only you're only probably interested in assets and liabilities um, but if it's elder law you need to know their income and expense as well um, and then with uh, with this screen you can change the entire setup of your um, asset intake but for that i would uh, refer you to our help articles on customizing the asset intake all right if you have any questions please reach out to support um, through the support bubble that normally flows here in the bottom right um, or you can send us an email at support at decisionvault.com thank you very much